Hi, I am Dayo Nujiwan. You're welcome to State of the Nation. Today, we'll be meeting with a member of the House of Representatives, representing Akoko Southwest and Southeast Federal Constituency, and is also the Deputy Chairman House of Reps Committee on National Security and Intelligence. We need to deal with the issue of human resources. And number one problem in my conscience is unemployment. And there are two ways to deal with unemployment. Getting government jobs, which we've been able to have well, quite a number of people to get jobs with um, government agencies, the secret services, um, the police, the military. And um, because these are the agencies that have employed within the past few or uh, few months, now um, we've been able to get one or two others into other parasitals in, um, in the transportation sector. We are to delve into actually providing support for small businesses. I consider that as my key achievement, trying to at least help our people grow small businesses and see how we can develop an economy for the, community, for, for the communities within the constituency. So we worked on that and I think at the last count we must have reached out to at least 400 to 500 people that were supported with um, business support funds, training, um, empowerment with skills, training, and all that. We've been able to reach out to over 500. Uh, we're able to support some to, to be able to access government loans to support their business. I think in that regard, we're able to reach out to about 120. Um, we're working on other schemes about building our uh, an incubation center because we have to think we should incubate businesses in our environment. The whole idea is let's have businesses in this environment. Let's grow a local economy. We think that when we have a proper economy, that every other developmental requirement will follow the economic development. In addition to that, I'm um, reaching out to younger people who are awarded scholarship for 250 people, three year scholarship for them to be able to go through um, Tetris institution. And incidentally, well, we're supporting a, a private tertiary institution within the constituency. The whole idea is if you have a tertiary institution in a community that is needing development, at least with the influx of students, will be able to at least create a new economic center. When you have an economic center, development changes the economy. So it works so well in that regard. And um, on, 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 on a personal note, I actually have a 80 people that I employed, um, pay them handsomely and try to get them to wish to, to be able to help their communities, solve problems within their communities, reach out to at least, um, well, I'll say sensitization, where we need to do sensitization on things like COVID-19. Recently, we had one that had to do with um, breast cancer awareness and all that. So there's quite a lot I have done on my own. That's in addition to at least to some government protests to the constituency. Um, at the moment, we're providing water in about um, seven different locations. Motorized bubbles in about seven different locations. Um, we'll help some community with electricity. And um, we'll help with the provision of um, a town hall in a place called Okaudo. Um, we renovated a town hall in Oka. And, um, Providing support for education, school desk, books, computers, to at least aid um, education. So you can see my, my concentration is on, on human capacity development. First, you've got to look at it from several perspectives. Motivation trying to get them to regain their confidence. I was in a committee, the Committee of Police Affairs, as I said, the Inspector General of Police, to offer our condolences, to, to show empathy to the police for the loss of lives, and to encourage them to be professional, to return to their duties. I think we need that. Um, as a uh, National Assembly level, I think the Speaker made it obvious that the protesters were, the entire protesters were actually, one of the things they were asking for was, Police reforms will have a new law, a new act, the Police Act for 2020 that actually introduced some reforms to the police. Then we said that when, in the course of reviewing the 2021 appropriation, 
everything will be done to ensure that at least there's enough funding to help the police provide for some of the things that the NSAS administrators were asking for. And don't forget that recently the police um, trust fund was, there was a lot of you know, legislation that were um, creating a police trust fund, and I know they've appointed a, a, a chairperson for the trust fund. This is to be able to get funds from the private sector to support whatever is appropriate so that the funding for the police improves. To think there are other areas that we can deal with them, encouraging the police to actually do more training, change their doctrine, change their attitude, which is just not about just the police, just Nigeria generally, changing attitude to the way they work. I think for the National Assembly, we've done quite a few. The protests on their own, I'll say, avoidable in some regards, unavoidable in some regards, because um, the issue by NSAS has been on for about three years. There have been protests before. There's been some maybe milder forms of protest. And um, I think as one or two opportunities, the police have tried to reform SARS. Uh, from saying SARS will no longer have, have be available at state level to federal SARS and all that. But I think it was, um, it was inadequate. The way the, the SARS issue was handled by the police hierarchy at some point seems not to give confidence to members of the public. I think that was what led to the second one. The second one, which is this recent one, things went well. Um, but I think at some point, those who started, they lost control because it became bigger than them. And of course, when something becomes so big, people with different goals, different agenda get involved. So whereas the protesters were practically in Lagos and Abuja and probably some other few cities, it became bigger than them and then people of all shades of opinion started their own small, small pockets of protest, which by the time government tried to move in, they had lost control. So it was avoidable, you know, what it turned out to, because I know in the Lekki Axis, most of the people who suffered huge business losses actually supported NSAS. So which means by the time they, um, hoodlums who move into it, they actually punished those who supported, brought them, or act, the whole thing was all about in the first instance. Doing enough means that there will be no banditry again, means there will be no terrorism. So for as long as you still have issues of banditry, it means it's not enough. So there's still a lot that should be done. Um, given that um, security is the number one, should be the number one priority of government. So anywhere you have issues of insecurity means that, you know, the effort hasn't been enough. So we call it a day. On this week edition of State of the Nation, I remain Dayo Olujumo. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more updates and follow us on our social media handle. Thank you so much.